um, if you if you were even aware, I, I went live without changing the pixels on the um, quality again. I've got to remember to do that every time. It doesn't set it up as an automatic for me. Um, so I did it. So hopefully you'll get a better stream now and you'll be able to see me better. Um, it is Monday morning. And of course, Chris is fishing. So um, I am by myself. I'm going to try to get some stuff done and get caught up on a few things. And um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful Monday morning. It's great to see all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I have a show and tell, but I'm going to wait till a few of y'all get on here this morning. I actually have uh, contacted someone that lives close to me in the county that was watching the show. And um, she is supposed to come over and meet me today and bring me some fresh farm eggs. So I'm excited about that. Um, here is my show and tell for the day. I did not tell you guys, but the last time I went home, I left my pill dispenser there in the apartment. Um, I sure have missed it. I found an old one here, and I've been using it, but I missed my little pill dispenser, so I ordered me a new one on Amazon. There is a link on here for it. You can probably get them maybe at your local Walmart. I'm not sure, um, but they're probably not any more uh, less, you know what I mean? Any cheaper. Uh, but anyway, I like them because they uh, spring like that. I like that. I also like it, <clears throat> I'm sorry I'm hoarse, because you can take out the night or the day if you need to for anything. And it's just a neat little pill dispenser. It's big so that your supplements and stuff will fit in there in the slots. Now, if you have to take medicine more than twice a day, it's not for you. But if you don't, then it's a good solution. Um, I haven't lost any weight over the weekend, but, but I had the cinnamon toast. I mean, not the cinnamon toast, the French toast on Saturday. And then yesterday, we went out twice. We went to, um, what do you call it, uh, Firehouse Subs. We shared a sub sandwich. I didn't eat chips. And then, and I ate, and I drank a Diet Dr. Pepper. And then for supper, we made a frozen pizza that's low in calories, but I didn't lose any weight. Um, but that's okay. The reason I didn't lose weight, to tell you the truth, is because I haven't been to the bathroom. You can't lose weight if you're not passing your food through. And the reason I'm not doing that is I haven't been eating breakfast over the weekend. Not a real breakfast. Uh, the day I made my cinnamon toast, I mean, French toast, um, I didn't have breakfast that day. So it was my brunch, my lunch, and breakfast. So I really need to make sure I eat my oatmeal in the morning. I think it's better for me, and I lose more weight when I do. A lot of people are wanting to know how I'm losing weight. I guess I'll do a short video this week on it on Collard Valley Cooks. It's not hard. Um, Tammy says her, her cake was auctioned at the top bin for $40. Good for you, Tammy. They know you're a good cook. Um, Miralax works wonders. Yeah, I wasn't having any problems when I was eating my oatmeal and eating enough vegetables. So I've got to go back to that. I was bad over the weekend um, and didn't do that. I have a good Bible study for you guys today, and I think you'll enjoy it. And I had a question. I've got a lot to do. I'm so behind. And a lot of it's because um, I did the special on May. So I had a lot of personal messages and comments to respond to. And I still have a couple I haven't finished responding to um, because I wanted to write a longer message. Um, I've also, so I was, I was, um, I had a lot of those to respond to. Then I did the, um, what did I do? something else that I had a lot of comments on 
and I can't even remember what it was now. I'm so crazy this morning. Anyway, the thing about May, now I can't even think about the other thing. It was something else major that I did. Oh, the response on my uh, butter margarine thing. So I got a lot of comments on it. So I'm super behind. I have received gifts. I haven't sent out thank you notes. And so if you're one of those that haven't received a thank you note or haven't gotten the message back, I'm sorry, but I'm working on it. I really am. Um, it's just hard for me to get to everything. And then I'm mailing out all these cups and that's taken a lot of my time uh, because I've had to try to contact everybody that hasn't contacted me and it's just not um, and wrap them and put them together so I'm just behind uh, please share my diet I will it's not a real diet but I'll, I'll tell you what I'm doing um, I'm going to go ahead and call out the names I had somebody say that it wasn't that it wasn't very nice for me to be calling out the names when people haven't paid. That's not what I'm doing. I'm calling out the people's names that I haven't been able to contact to get their cup. And they need to send me an email. Um, today, if I do not get a response from these people, I will go ahead and start down the list and give the cups to someone else because I've been asking for an email from these individuals uh, probably about five days now. So I think it's time to say they may not be interested anymore and I can go to the next person. Um, and I'm going to call out these names. If you still want your cup, send me an email. The email's at the top of the description post. I need an email from you so that I can get uh, payment and a mailing address. All right? Sharon Harris, Lisa Jones, Judy, no, I got hers, actually, I made hers this morning, never mind, Judy, Kimberly Glenn, T. Rose Lover, Vicki Mershak, Pintha Wade, Brenda Hunt, if I called your name um, and you don't respond today, then I will give the cups. I'll start tomorrow by giving the cups to the next in line. I have a few written down that are the next in line. So um, also Louisiana Lady is on here too. Louisiana Lady. So Sharon Harris, Lisa Jones, Kimberly Glenn, Alice Chen, I forgot to call your name, Vicki Mersnack, T. Rose Lover, Pintha Wade, Brenda Hunt, and Louisiana Lady. If I do not hear from you guys today, and Alice, you were on there too, Alice Chen, um, that I will start giving them away tomorrow. Um, so that's it. I know you're tired of hearing it, but you know, it was just a nice thing that I did. And so I hate for them not to get their cup when they're the first ones who... Uh, went through the method and asked correctly, okay? Um, all righty, I've got a few emails of people that want them, so uh, maybe they'll be next in line. Huh. Today is Monday. Wonderful Monday. I have lots of okra in the refrigerator that I need to cut up and freeze, and um, I really am thinking about getting me an upright freezer to go in my sunroom so that I can freeze some things. Uh, I don't have a lot of freezer space to be freezing garden stuff. Um, and I may actually do that today. I had someone gift me some Amazon dollars and so I may use them for that. Um, it's good to see everybody this morning. Let's start our Bible study. It's gonna be very encouraging. Matter of fact, I had somebody send me an email, and um, it was a personal message, and they were pretty angry at God uh, for some things that had happened in their life, and they couldn't understand why God would forgive um, a person when they had been so evil, okay? And can I say that 
God is nothing like us. And that, that is why he sent Jesus Christ to pay our sin debt. He does not love the sin. He hates the sin, but loves the sinner. All sin is sin. We categorize it and we put sin in bigger and higher places than the other sin. And I do know that he listed some things and called out some things more than others. But let me just say that it's hard for us to understand this forgiving love because we're people. And when you put your trust in people, when you put your trust in people, you're going to be disappointed every time. Whether And lots of times that's what happens in the church. We put our trust in a pastor, in a youth pastor, in a teacher. And then when they disappoint us, we have had it. And we give up on God and we give up on the church. And can I say... Every church has people in it that are evil. Every church. Churches are full of people, and people are not perfect. That's why we needed Jesus Christ. Um, so I know it's hard to understand why God would love someone when they sin, but he does. Okay, and that's what's wonderful, and that's what allows us to be part of the family of God. And you can't categorize the sin and think that some people deserve hell because of it. Because all of us, every single one of us, deserve hell because we're born in sin. Okay. And the only thing that keeps us from that is the blood of Jesus Christ. So, um, I don't know if you're listening. You may not even be listening. I'm not sure that this person even watches Bible study. But I've got to get a response to her. It is a woman. And uh, see if I can't help her uh, come to peace with God. Because a lot of people do get angry with God. Um, I remember at a young age, I got angry with God. A very young age I got married when I was 15 years old I felt like it's what God would have me to do it turned out to be a terrible experience um, and I was angry at God because I felt like I had followed his will when in fact it probably wasn't his will it was a bad decision on my part but it was hard to see at that age now that I look back, I know it was a bad decision. And I don't think it was part of God's will because it was against my parents' wishes. Um, although, although I was so young, they did have to sign for me because I wasn't pregnant. So um, all of us have times in our lives that we may or may not get angry with God. And that's okay because many people in the Bible got angry with God even if you think that sounds terrible, it's just we're people and it happens. So if you're in that position, um, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but know that God loves you and he loves everybody and not the sin in the world. And you can't put your hope in your um confidence in people not even your own husband or wife you can't do that okay all right we are going to start bible study that's not what bible study is about i just thought, thought felt led to talk about that this morning so um we are going to start in this bible study is charles spurgeon's morning reading i reference it out of the blue letter bible.org there is a tab link on the description post that you can actually go and read that from okay um today's verse is deuteronomy i know i say this wrong deuteronomy 
it's Deuteronomy uh, chapter 5, verse 24. The Lord our God has shown us his glory. The Lord our God has shown us his glory. Have you seen God's glory? I can't remember um, what I titled this. Let me come back and see if I can tell. Are you a shining star? Believe it or not, you're going to be surprised at what makes you stand out from the rest. Um, so we are going to hop over here and start reading this wonderful Bible study. It says, God's great design in all of his works is the action of his own glory. Any aim less than this would be unworthy of himself. So his great design in his works is the action of his own glory. But how shall the glory of God be manifested or shown to such fallen creatures as we are? Man's eye is no single. Let me stop right here because of the subject we were just on. Um, Notice he says that we're fallen creatures, each and every one of us. So another thing you do when you get angry with God because of a person and their forgiveness, the fact that they would join you in heaven and you don't think they deserve it, can I say that you don't deserve it either? None of us deserve it. That's hard. To, that's a hard pill to swallow. Because we as people think that some of us are good or are, are more good than others. And can I say none of us are good? No, not one. According to Romans chapter 3, verse 23, there are none good. No, not one. Never think that you are above somebody else, even if they are a murderer, a child molester, a liar, a thief. Do not think that you are above them because you are not. We are all equal in the side, sight of God when it comes to the fact that we're born sinners. We're all guilty. Now, if you're covered by the blood of Jesus, he sees Jesus, not you. It's not you that it impresses God. It's Jesus living through you that impresses God. It's never you. Okay? So remember that too uh, when you get angry about things that's happened. It says, but how shall the glory of God be manifested or shown to such a fallen creature as we are? Man's eye is no single. He has a side glance toward his own honor. That's exactly what I was just talking about. He has too high an estimate of his own powers and so is not qualified to behold the glory of the Lord. It is clear then that self must stand out of the way, that there may be room for God to be exalted. And this is the reason why he brings his people often into straits and difficulties so that they will be conscious of their own folly and weakness. This way, they may be able to behold the majesty of God when he comes forth to work their deliverance. He whose life is one even and a smooth path will see but little of the glory of the Lord. For he has few occasions of self-emptying. Because of this, he has little experience at being filled with the surprising unknowns of God. So if you have a life that seems to be very smooth and everything seems to go just right for you, and you account it to the blessings of God, everything about your life, the fact that you've never had a stumble or a fall or a storm or a sickness or a death. Can I say 
that according to this, you have had few occasions to self-empty, to take your mind off of yourself. Because of this, you have little experience in being filled with surprising unknowns of God. So if you've been visited by these storms, this shows right here that those storms are a blessing. And not only a blessing, but they make you a shining star for God. Those who navigate few streams and shallow creeks know little of the God of storms. But they who do business in great waters, these see his wonders in the deep. Among the huge Atlantic waves of loss, poverty, temptation, and wrong thinking, we learn the power of Jehovah because we feel the littleness of man. It's hard to see how weak we are, how much we need need God, how much um, our life depends on him when everything goes our way. Thank God then if you have been led by a rough road. It is this which has given you your experience of God's greatness and loving kindness. Now I'm going to stop right here because there's a happy medium to this all right if your road is always rough when it I'm gonna bring this up because it matters if your road is always rough when it comes to finances I don't think this really just applies to you uh, so that you can raise your hand up and say oh my gosh if anybody has a rough road I do because it seems like nothing's ever met financially in my life I'm gonna bring this up because our pastor actually talked about giving yesterday in, in charity and can I say that God he mentioned the fact that God talks about very important things so many times in the Bible, but more than anything, money is mentioned in the Bible. And money matters. Now, if you're not giving to God, if you're not tithing and giving Him His portion, and not just what you have left after your needs are met, but actually putting Him first in your life with your finances, then you're always going to have a rough road. Always. And so that does not apply here. Let me just point that out um, when it comes to these storms. All right. Um, and if you don't believe me, then try your hand at giving and you will find out that your finances will lay more intact and, and they will become something that is not a burden any longer. I've been on the right path with finances and I've been on the wrong path with finances and I know personally from very personal experiences uh, throughout my lifetime it seems like everything tears up and goes wrong when I'm not given to God okay so I just thought I'd bring that up um, your troubles have enriched you with a wealth of knowledge this knowledge would be gained by no other means your trials have been the cleft of the rock in which Jehovah has set you, as he did his servant Moses, that you might behold his glory as it passes by. Praise God that you have not been left to the darkness and ignorance which continued prosperity may have involved, but that in the great fight of affliction, you have been made eligible to shine brighter for his glory in his wonderful dealings with you. I hope you've enjoyed today's Bible study. Um, and I will end with this. When it comes to money again, there are many of us who do give and may still have some money problems. But most of the time, if that's the case, God will show out and provide what we need. And we will be able to see his glory in it. Um, 
So I have had many things in my life that behold God's glory. Uh, bigger storms than an average storm. And can I say, it really does um, give God a chance to show you His glory and show out and uh, increase your faith and wisdom in the Lord. And it also increases your uh, confidence, which you just know that He is in control and He has you no matter what. And it's such a blessing to go through a storm. It really is a blessing, and we should count it as a blessing because it makes us stars. It makes us special compared to others because we have seen his wonders and his glory, and we should thank him for it. Um, matter of fact, yesterday's, we, we actually visited a church yesterday. I just loved it that's more of a contemporary type church which i don't have a problem with because as long as you are worshiping and praising the lord i don't think it makes any difference to the lord how you do it um and can i say this a lot of the worship songs are all about god almost every one of them are about god instead of us many of the songs we grew up singing out of the old church hymnals were about us uh, they really were. The worship music of today is more about worshiping Jesus, not ourselves, or just thinking about ourselves. I'm not saying that those songs are wrong or bad, the older songs. I'm just saying that you should never look at the worship music and automatically judge it because it didn't come out of your church hymnal, okay? Because really, biblically, the words in those are more right than on many of the songs in the church hymnals are, are taken out of context. Believe it or not, that's true. Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful message. A young man, the youth pastor, brought it yesterday on giving. Matter of fact, it was so good. I think I may link it to here and let y'all take a listen. It was very encouraging, very powerful, and a wonderful, wonderful message that we heard yesterday. Um, so I think I will share it. I hope y'all have a blessed day, and I will list those who have uh, prayer requests. We have several with very important needs that I hope that you take the time out to read and listen to, and we are going to go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace, your glory, your storms that you put us through as your children uh, so that we may see your glory in the storm. Lord, we thank you for molding and shaping us into the Christians that you would have us to be. We pray that you would use us for your glory as your vessel, that we put ourselves aside and let you live and um, shine your light through us as Christians, that we think about others more than ourselves and love others more than ourselves and put them first before ourselves, especially those that live with us and live around us so that we they can see your love and not just a human love because it's extraordinary. May you bless each and every one of those that are listening today. May they spread your word today and your love. I just pray for those who have special needs and special prayer requests. Will you wrap your arms around them and give them the peace and love and direction that they need. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I pray y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. And thanks for watching Real Southern Woman, where we love God and we are not ashamed to say it. Bye y'all. Love ya.